Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, the May Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife. Uh, two new T. Kell knives in my collection, which is really exciting to me. And then I want to know, what's your rotation routine? How does it work for you? Um, uh, things are changing a little bit for me. I don't know why. Maybe it's uh, maturity perhaps. Uh, but as uh, in recent days, I've been carrying knives longer, less rotation. And uh, I'm curious uh, how it works for you. Now, uh, I should probably be rotating more because I'm just gathering more and more knives uh, around me. But soon, as soon as I get on my selling game and everything starts moving out, it will be fine. How y'all doing out there? Dave, this old sword blade reviews. How you doing? Evening, Bob, Jim, and y'all sharp junkies. Grab your knife and jump on that merry-go-round. No doubt. Oh, man. Uh, this man right here, speaking of T-Kel, uh, posted a threefer, a three-shot of his T-Kel knives. And I wanted to ask you, Dave, about that uh, little night guard, I think it's called. Uh, the little warny that I think might have to be my next one. It's so cool. Kept McNessar. Good to see you here, man. Howdy, Bob, Jim and junkies. Happy Thursday night knives. Happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. Start of the weekend and to Chris Blade Ogre. How you doing, man? Mm. Uh Oh, I can tell I'm going to say me in a lot tonight. So I'm going to try and uh, stop, but I have to say it for this acid test kids. Good to see you here, man. Um, no, always a pleasure. Uh, speaking of which, well, uh, this is an acid test. This is uh, this. Uh, well, you'll you'll see when he gets here. Uh, have a knife day. Joseph S. Good to see you here, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. He says, well, good evening to you. I added the sir. Gosh, how do you like that? A little bit of self uh, elevation there. Tony Villarreal. Good to have you here, Tony. Thanks, Bob, for sending me a notification for this. You're welcome. I'm glad you're here. Cheeto Bandito, hello, ATK and Joseph. So a uh, little, little action happening in the comments. Will be, how you doing there, Will? Hey there, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. Will be, will, will be, will be the proud owner of a, uh, a Nova One. Just happened to have one right here. Uh, these are uh, these are due in August. Uh, I, I, I think I said to someone who asked, uh, that it was going to be July, but no, it's going to be August. Um, and he is at work on them. They're all cut out, and some of them are beveled. Uh, Ken Kaufman, good to have you here, Ken. Good evening, folks, he says. Good evening to you, sir. Nice to have you with us. Let me put this knife away. And as you could see down on the knife cam, I had the Puzan Predator Hunter. Uh, this thing is uh, a recent indulgence one of those totally unnecessary, uh, well, that's like 98% of my collection, totally unnecessary. Uh, but if you count emotional necessity and that kind of thing, sentimentality, uh, at least 75% is, uh, and then, and then there's a good 25% that I could probably stand to sell, but I'm saving it for trading during the apocalypse flip solo. Good to see you here. Uh, always a pleasure, sir. Oh, uh, slash. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. That's something a little bit. Uh, well, let's say uh, maybe my daughter knows what that is. Uh, Greg Maroney. What's up, y'all? He says, well, what's up with you, sir? And uh, what I meant by that flip solo is that uh, I don't I don't. I don't know the avatars so much. The little, the, the, you know what I'm talking about. Five door. Good to have you here. Greetings all, he says. I see you on blade forums, lurking around, lurking for knives. Uh, this old sword, that's the nightshade. That's it. Uh, Tim is an evening. Uh, I'm sorry. Tim is an evening sort of guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. With his night stalker and nightshade. The funny thing is, is I had to interview him on a Saturday morning because he's very much not an evening guy. Um, but I like that, uh, that little warning is so cool. Um, yeah, I might have to, I might have to check that out. Uh, his knives have really, really like grown on me hugely, Mr. Greg T and, and you're a big part of that Dave, No doubt. I've been watching your, your reviews, Mr. Greg T Roberto, Robert, Bobby boy, looking sharp. He says, thank you. Yeah. I got my ear rate, my, my ears lowered as they say, uh, I got butchered a few weeks weeks back got a terrible haircut i'm not the kind of person to 
make appointments. So uh, uh, I had to just go into the run of the mill shop that I go to. Usually it's always a gamble, terrible haircut. Uh, wife kind of rescued it after a couple of weeks, had to go take care of it. Went to a place where you have to make an appointment. Got a great haircut. Cheeto Mandito. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Cheeto Mandito. Still rocking your Victorinox Fruit Knife Pop. Uh, funny you should say that. I have uh, one of them right here. I have one in the car. My favorite one is in the car. And uh, that one has a is a smaller. Uh, they come in two sizes. That one is smaller. And the sheath is a little bit easier. It comes out a little bit easier. And I put Velcro on the side. And then there's Velcro on the side of my uh, car seat. So, I, so if, I, uh, if I feel like I need it, because yeah, it's a great, someone reaches in the car, it's a great knife. You know, it's hard to take something big and use it. But if this, someone reaches in the car and you stick it in their arm, uh, they, they will cut themselves just in retracting their arm. I know that's you know, ridiculous scenario, but it's something I've thought of. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I have one in the car. Uh, I like this one for in the pocket carry. So yeah, man, I, I do. I love this Victorinox fruit knife. I was just watching um, an Ed Calderon video yesterday. Very interesting guy. Will be, can't wait for August, he says. Cool. I can't wait to get it in your hands and, uh, and hear how much you like it, because hopefully you do. BFV Gunner, good to have you here, man. Mr. Knife Junkie, sir. Have you ever seen the Ontario Knives Chimera? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe. I've probably seen it, but... Hmm. Now I'll have to look it up. Ontario Knives Chimera. I need I need to get my, my note card out. Start jotting stuff down. Ontario Chimera. You know, uh, they used to teach shorthand edgy american good to have you here shane i have no method to my rotation just completely depends on my mood if not the job at hand yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's that's how that's how i've always operated but i've also kind of felt this um uh, uh well let's just say i'm i'm a slightly ashamed to admit it but like geez i have these really nice knives i need to carry them uh, not, not to show off cause no one, no one around me cares, but just so that I feel like I'm getting my money's worth, even though I'm definitely not cutting my money's worth. So, uh, I did that. I've done that for a long time, but recently, and I'll show you which knife that is, uh, I've been, I've been into carrying a knife longer once I get it than I have been in, in quite a while. Flip solo. It's a wave. Happy to uh, be a part Bob and Jim. Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure also. Hero Sticks. Hey, Bob, Jim, all evening and cheers. Evening to you, Hero Sticks. Uh, uh, he, uh, Hero has loaned me some awesome knives. Uh, some of my close-up videos have been thanks to him. BVF Gunner says, also greetings and salutations from Central Texas. Texas, a place that I idealize. I think I went through that last week. <laughs> Yeah, I repeat myself. That's just a, that that has always been. It's a family trait, believe me. Tony Villarreal says, I usually carry my Cobra Tech Deadpool out the front. I'm interested in Cobra Tech. I I, uh, I played at their table at Blade Show for quite a while. And sometimes my Gerber Empower Urban Blue or my Kershaw Exotac. That Exotac is cool. The Empower. Not sure what that is. I got to say, I hate the name. I've always disliked the word empower. I always thought it was kind of a corporate word. Uh, but uh, I'm very interested in checking that out because they have a new one out. What is it called? The Scout. We'll take a look at that later in Knife Life News if uh, when we get to it. And uh, that looks like a pretty interesting Gerber. And those aren't words I say I haven't really said since the late 1970s when my dad had a really cool one. Uh, that I coveted. Mad Hatter, good to see you here, sir. Trading during the apocalypse, my sentiments as well. I will be living large and high on the hog. <laughs> uh, faux show. Uh, and good evening to NAF junkies. Good evening, uh, Mad Hatter. Yeah, that's that was my excuse at one point. Uh, you know, my wife and I were heavily into Walking Dead at one point, and uh, my wife was also kind of simultaneously noting the the swelling characteristic of the just just the fact that my collection was growing 
and I and and I said, you know, it's it's barter. I'm looking at it as like a bartering investment, you know, for future you know, d- disasters. And and that worked for a little while, uh, and then she just became numb to it. Uh, or or maybe it's more like, you know, maybe sometimes our hobbies are tolerated because they just they quell us a little bit, quell our I don't know, um, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think. It keeps us like busy, you know, better, better busy than idle hands. We know what happens with idle hands. Tony Villarreal says, what kind of folders do you like? Oh, geez. Oh, Pete, man. Uh, I like them all, all folders. What do I prefer the most? Um, I guess my favorite knives in my collection are mostly titanium frame locks. Uh, but, um, but, uh, also they are back locks because I love cold steel knives. Um, but also they are liner locks because I love Emerson knives. And, uh, so I, I, it's, that's really difficult for me to actually say, I'm looking at what I have arrayed out next to me and I have like things like this, which I love the cold steel recon one. Um, and then, and then look at this awesome little liner lock, the Finch drifter, a uh, sweet, beautiful design, you know, awesome wood. And, and then I have this Puzan Predator Hunt. Well, that's, that's not a folder. Um, and then for 40 bucks, you know, I, I have this Victor, the beautiful Bowie knife from, from Petrified Fish. It's a Chinese manufacturer with a weird name doing great stuff. I love, I just love them all, you know, and I, and then I had, I have a whole collection of slip joints too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I do love them. Blade, uh, folders in general. Uh, I run and, and then fixed blades. I mean, I love it all. Uh, Blade Ogre says, I run my rotation like a little football team <laughs> where certain types of knives are in certain positions. I, I get that from your from your uh, pocket checks. Speaking of pocket checks. Hey, Ken Kaufman, a newest acquisition till honeymoon is over. Right. That's kind of what I'm talking about tonight. Um, so I better get to it. I think it's time for a pocket check. This was definitely not uh, in my pocket today, that work tough gear. I need more work tough gear in my life, that's for sure. Uh, but th- I'm going to talk about this knife in a second. This is the Petrified Fish Viking. I talked about it last week. I had just gotten it. Uh, but today, kicking it out of my pocket for the first time in a week, and that doesn't happen often, uh, is the Spiderco Patata. I love this Patata. It is uh, oh, part of the Ethnic series from Spiderco. And it's from Sardinia. It, it is a uh, the customary folding knife. Excuse me. Well, I'm so sorry. Lots of seltzer water tonight. Shouldn't do that on Thursdays. Uh, but that's a, uh, t- a design that is derived from a Sardinian knife. That's an island off of Italy. And this it's cool if you look it up and, and look at some local examples and traditional examples of these knives. You'll see these. Uh, big folders with that beautifully shaped blade and and basically that same handle, uh, but not liner lock and and with beautiful horn and different uh, local materials, uh, very much like that. And then it it's uh, you know I'll never get rid of this because it taps into my uh, Italian pride slash heritage, and uh, so that's a great excuse to to not get rid of it, even though I very rarely carry it. Uh, but I was moved to after doing the podcast. Um, this past week, uh, showing off my spider co collection. Speaking of which, here's a little sidebar. I do must mention, uh, we've been having a, a, a mounting issue with, uh, with the podcast, be it the Wednesday supplemental or, uh, worse the Sunday show. And, uh, so, uh, Jim and I are taking a week and we're figuring it out. So, uh, so that we can, come back with the best quality we can. Uh, yeah, we, we noticed it too. And uh, so we're going to be taking care of that. Two-week hiatus to take care of this business. And as we do, we're also upgrading some stuff, which is also exciting. So, um, well, uh, so that's not Thursday Night Knives, and it's, not, it's also not my shorts and my videos and stuff that I put out, just the Wednesday supplemental and the Sunday interview for two weeks. 
I actually uh, had to postpone a guest I am very excited about. Uh, he goes by Fieldworks on, uh, on Instagram, but that's the one and only time I'll ever say it until he comes He comes on. Very interesting dude with, with, with a very specific set of skills and an awesome knife collection, so we're going to talk to him. Uh, but I did have to move that uh, because of these issues. So all that being said, let me continue with this pocket check and just say that this patata, though I love it, uh, the distal taper on the spine and also that extreme taper at the tip makes me nervous. It's just a nerve wracking knife. Uh, what can I say? Um, tips, tips. And I sometimes, you know, what, what happened in my uh, right pocket for most of the day, right next to the patata, uh, was the Jack Wolf knives. Let me open this up next to the mic. Jack Wolf knives. Oh, so gratifying. So satisfying. The big bro, Jack. Uh, I, I know that there's a new one on its way, which is very exciting, based on the doctor's knife, a favorite pattern of mine, uh, and uh, a very cool uh, uh, purpose behind the design uh, that, that is uh, exciting. Uh, but this one, man, this is the classic American jackknife with that uh, nearly three inch clip point blade and nearly four inch handle. It's just a nice, big working, um, fancy pants, but working uh, slip joint knife. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could do hard work. The, the kind of the hardest of hard work that you can do with a slip joint, you could do with this uh, to great effect. But you've also got fancy materials, fancy build, like incredible, impeccable, perfect build, and great uh, materials, modern materials. Those, Jack, I mean, they're awesome. The Jack Wolf knives are awesome. And I'm not just saying that because Ben happens to be a very generous uh, friend and uh, sends those along to me. Uh, I'm saying it because uh, they've kind of ruined me for other slip joints, or at least have have put other slip joints in a in a more traditional category to me, um, which is good all the way around because I like traditional things uh, as well as new things. Gaston, good to have you here, sir. Evening, Knife Junkies. Great to see you, Bob. Well, it's great to see you here, sir, in your orange shirt as usual. Josh33025. Hello, he says. Hello, Josh33025. That looks like a familiar zip code. Byron Kennedy. Howdy, Bob. Jim, Junkies. Running late tonight, lurking listening while at cabinet shop oh, working on keepsake chess for my grandson how cool 13th birthday i wonder when it is uh my daughter's uh 13th birthday is in the offing like like she's already acting like it's already come cheers to you byron uh inside uh, a new buck alpha pro hunter with leather very cool I like I like that buff alpha uh, buck alpha hunter. I'm I, I'm liking buck and buck more, uh, especially for some of their older stuff. Ground fog, how's it going, sir? With the wave, I know last week I thought it was clapter uh, wave. <laughs> BVF gunner carry routine splits evenings between anticipated need and what grabs me that day. Yes. All right. All right. Speaking of what grabs you that day. Um, I need to I need to continue with my pocket check so I can find out what you guys were wearing. Um, uh, but yeah, me too. Uh, my needs don't vary much. And my needs are are like what's going to, you know, what's going to be practical, which usually just means what's going to be comfortable uh, because I am not taking them out and using them all the time. I'm just uh, frequently taking them out and strapping them and cutting paper with them. No. Uh, uh, say, okay. So on my belt today, up front, scout carry up front, uh, is this, and this is one of the new knives, but I'll, I'll show it right now. And this is the T Kel night stalker and man alive. It is amazing. Now this has been out of stock for quite a while. This is their, or I don't know if quite a while, but it's been out of stock recently. And this is their most <laughs> sellingest knife. I don't think that's how you say it. This is by far their most popular knife and uh, it is going to be reintroduced or this newest run is going to be dropping at blade show 2023 in aebl and um, it is awesome it is so amazingly sharp this also has that nickel boron coating 
uh, that TKEL is known for. That's a coating that's used in, fi in firearms. Um, it's like a solid lubricant. It also protects uh, the steel from corrosion, uh, et cetera. But it also is hard. It, 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 has, it adds to the, the hardness. Um, so it's a, it's a, or, or it, it adds to the, not the, yeah, it adds to the hardness, not the toughness. Uh, but it's a, a really, really great little knife. And I, man, I'm really becoming a quick fan of scout style in the front. Never thought I would because, um, well, it's, it's hard to pull off unless you have a way to hide it, but it's very easy to hide with these small knives. Uh, these little TKEL knives. That's a three and a quarter inch blade, um, right? Yeah, three and a quarter inch blade and a small thin handle, and it's got that uh, grenade grip on it. It's really excellent, and uh, it's excellent in the reverse grip with the finger through the ring. And you know, I'm kind of, I get kind of sketched out about finger through the ring, but it's perfectly set up for knuckle alignment. And uh, so, you know, you could, you could punch, I could, I feel like I could punch with this. I haven't yet uh, with any sort of impact uh, and not feel misaligned. You know what I mean? That sometimes the, uh, the ring is like plopped right on top of the handle and the handle isn't curved. And, you know, to me, that's just about putting the thumb through uh, and using it like that, but um, in a downward, like you would in a, a ring dagger. Anyway, my point is, this thing is awesome. Carried it all day long. Barely knew it was there. Sitting down, crouching, seat belt, whatever it was, uh, it, it was not an issue at all. And did not, does not print uh, with a with even a a t shirt over it. Really, uh, just as long as it's squared up in the center. Um, and uh, and you know, if you have a, a belly, you know. Uh, some some larger people, uh, your your t-shirt will uh, dra uh, drape over. And I know from experience, uh, uh, you know, plenty of it. So it's it's good to uh, good to have a little knife like this on you. That's a fixed blade. This can also drop in the pocket. I love this. And then the super super thin sheep sheath, thin from top to bottom, about the width of your belt. And then this new discrete carry concepts clip that uh, Tim of, T of TKL Knives developed with discrete carry concepts for this uh, kind of horizontal scout carry. So awesome, awesome knife. Of course, I also had to have a, uh, a an, an emotional support knife on me in ESK. And uh, that's just a knife category for me. Uh, that that basically arose from sitting at a desk at work, and uh, and then half of the time sitting at a, in a dark room editing, uh, you know, and and being able to 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 fidget and expel that kind of energy while I have to be sitting there uh, with a knife. And today today's emotional support knife was the Senkut. This is how I pronounce it: Watuaga. Some people say Watuga. Some I don't know. I, I, I'm, I choose to pronounce every letter in this, in this one here. So to me, this is the Watuaga and you kind of have to say it like that fits the hand really well. It's a beautiful, uh, Warncliffe blade. This one cut an apple today. The apple didn't stand a chance. Uh, nice micarta here. I, I can't tell what color it is. I think it's green, but even, even when I wet it and rub it, it's, I, I think it's green. But in any case, uh, a great knife. This was introduced at Blade Show last year. And I remember Stasa had mm, had a prototype or, or a very early release of it. And I was like, when's it going to come out? And he would show it in videos and be like, but I'm not sure when it's coming out. Ugh. But uh, I was very excited when it did. And I really do like this knife. I, I got to say, though, it takes a little bit too much to get that lock in. Uh, for true fidget factor, but that should make me more confident, even so, in its locking up ability. All right, that's what I had in my pocket today. Let me know what you had. Uh, sorry for hogging the mic. Uh, by the way, little attitude adjuster here on the ring of the TKEL. This thing is so cool. Love this knife. And, and I got another one I'm going to show you. But this, this one was uh, a, a gift from Tim uh, when I ordered a different knife. 
And, uh, you know, I'm incredibly appreciative. Uh, Six Semper Tyrannus. Good to have you here, Six Semper. I got stabbed a number of years ago. My wife thinks my knife collection is some form of cognitive dissonance. Wow. Or, or it could be that facing your fear thing. Um, you know, geez, I'm sorry to hear you were stabbed. That's that, that sounds awful. Um, you know, and, and obviously, especially those of us who collect weapon knives and, and, you know, are, have that, uh, have that approach, uh, deeply in us. We think about it a lot and, uh, it, it's, it's very, very grim and the, the realities of that. So I'm, I'm sorry that that happened to you. Eugene Crabb says, carried a shaka. Eugene, good to have you here, man. Eugene says, carried a shaka in Magna Cut and Fat Carbon. Swiss Army Knife Tinker for emotional support. That's cool. I, I could see a uh, Swiss Army Knife being great for emotional support. And there are all these different uh, tools that you can open and use. What's a shaka? Let me know. Uh, but, you know, you could use the scissors. You could use the uh, tweezers. Uh, I just learned that you can use those tweezers uh, to... You know, if you alter them, like pry them apart, you can use them uh, for escape and evade purposes. Uh, BF BFV Gunner says, uh, I'll lots of times put a long carried knife in a lefty setup and newer folders in the righty clip. Sub three inch knives go in the watch pocket. Yes, that makes sense to me. And I like that. I like the the changing the setup. I, I have a slightly a, a similar kind of thing uh, where um, uh, sub uh, basically the three inch folders and sub three inch folders uh, that have clips go in the back left and then uh, and then the ones go in the right. Uh, the newer ones go in the right. Edgy American says Spiderco ethnic designs are very interesting. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, Shane, uh, I know you're not a, a, a Bowie guy, but uh, the Bowie and the Navaja, uh, two, two of the designs in their ethnic series. What do you think of those knives? Um, I, I also love that they did the Barong, so beautiful. And then they did the, the Chris um, and they've done, yeah, they've done some pretty damn cool knives. To me personally, I have to say this is the most elegant design i think some of the some of the ethnic designs especially the ed shemp and i know he's a good designer especially because his knives cut well and they feel great in the hand but they are ugly and weird looking <laughs> i gotta say um so yeah some of those uh ed shemp ethnic designs are a little weird but they're interesting and imminently collectible five door says the spider co overview was fantastic well, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you think so. Uh, I I got one more coming, but I don't know when they're going to finally release the military too. And I just couldn't wait. Shane says I really dislike that clip point. Yes, yes. With the with the weird guard halfway up the bolster, it's like just in the way. I blame Jim. It has to be Jim's fault. He says. Jim's like, what did I do? <laughs> mm. BFG Gunner says pocket check. Uh, Wegner Esquire in the pocket watch. Uh, was that when? Oh, Wegner, yeah, in the pocket watch. Uh, Camille Camillus CQB2 lefty in the waistband. Uh, right pocket bench made barrage black tanto. I like that. Uh, Ontario Shamara, uh, was the trunk knife today. Uh, Shamara, okay, I need to know what this Shamara is. Ontario Shimera. Uh, it sounds like a fixed blade to me. Uh, Camillus CQB2, lefty in the waistband. CQB2. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I like the sound of it from CQB. I bet it sound, I bet it's a cool knife. Excuse me. Flip, Flip Solo says, today's emotional support shiv <laughs> exceed design, exceed designs, tyrant razor MV3. Holy. Uh, with my God, I'm sorry, guys. Whoo, sorry about that. With 24 karat gold magnets, you know, I read that and it it took my breath away. It's super satisfying. Damn, man, that sounds amazing. I don't even know what that is, uh, but it sounds cool, uh, especially with the razor and the V and yeah, it all sounds cool. Uh, sounds like there's some titanium in there too. Uh, Hero Stick says pocket check Berg Blades Iron Pup. I'm very familiar with that one because it was in my care for a short while. 
or maybe a little bit longer than he, uh, than intended. Uh, Frank Hunter dressed up EDC fixed blade. Ooh, that sounds good. And a Swiss Army knife, Alox Cadet in silver. I love that knife. I need to find mine or buy a new one. Edgy American says pocket check Spider Co stretch uh, carbon fiber. Plus, I cut up a pork loin with my Doug Ritter Hogue fixed blade. Yes. And that pork loin tasted just a little more delicious because of how it was cleaved. Ken Kaufman says Kershaw launch two. I love the launch knives. Can't remember which one the two is. Uh, Kershuffle. Kershuffle and a cold steel neck knife for the first time. What cold steel neck knife? Let me know, man. I got a couple of them right here. This one is is my favorite for actual wear and carry. What is it? I can never remember the name. Counterattack 2. Sweet little dagger. Uh, so let me know. And the Kershuffle. Kershuffle. What is the Kershuffle? Uh, I think we just talked about this also last week. Uh, Mutiny Grim. Good to see you here, Mutiny. Uh, looks like reverse Persian Karambit that guy... Uh, Santhrop makes. I don't know who I don't know who Saint Throp is, uh, but hi, by the way. Hi to you, sir. Uh, your biceps are bigger, Mr. Knife Junkie. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are. I, it's this shirt that uh, Have a Knife Day gave me. I washed it and it shrank up and I put it on and I was like, all right, that's the trick. Just get them in, get them in size small. Is that a knife in your waistband or are you just happy to see me? Oh, it's a knife in the waistband, but I am happy to see you. Razorback, I'm happy to see you too. <laughs> I'm late. Howdy, y'all, he says from Australia. Good to have you here, man, all the way from Australia. Uh, Edgy American says, me, Bob, you're talking about me. I'm fat. <laughs> no, uh, you didn't strike me as fat. No. Uh, man of ample carriage and, and uh, wait, what do they say? And, uh, you know. A man, uh, you didn't strike me as as fat. Blade Ogre says, carrying the Sniper Blade Works LPC, uh, Beg Bodega in D2. Whoa, that is tempting and cool and interesting. How how these Beg knives can now uh, be had in D2. Uh, and what is it? Is it G10 or is it um, nice FRN? Whatever it is, I want in because I've always wanted a uh, a Bodega, but you know. Oh, okay. Uh, keeping keeping on. Work Tough Gear links the eighty seven GEC English Jack. Uh, the uh, I was about to say Road Runner. Sorry, the Rough Rider Elephant Toe, uh, sleazy ogre custom fixed blade, uh, fixy. That is a cool knife. Uh, you you got to follow Blade Ogre, and you'll see that knife. Uh, that he designed and who did you have is that old squirrel who did you have make that knife i can't remember uh but it shows up in a lot of his uh pictures so definitely check it out ag russell k94 front lock that sounds cool ag russell is interesting boker nesme and and quiet carry man always with the with the nice big full let's say not big but uh full spectrum carry i love it Poor man, Zephius, Zephius. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. And I think the Z the Zephius, Zephius has a more aggressive blade, but I think the blade might be slightly shorter. But it's a it's got a less of a curve here and and a swedge, and it it just looks a little meaner. Uh, but yes, uh, Blade Ogre. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. This old sword says. Uh, today's carry, Vosti Gator, new Warncliffe. That's cool. Warncliffe variant. Maxace Kestrel Big Spearhead Front Flipper. Also sounds cool because everything from Maxace is kind of cool. Tkel Nighthawk Fixed Blade Tonto. That's a, that's a sweet one. Looks a bit like this, but with a slightly longer Tonto blade. That's an awesome one. Uh, the Kets... I'm sorry. The Ketuo Telson with tie zirconium handle. Something new that you recently posted that is really cool that I didn't recognize, I think. Uh, very nice carry, as always. You guys have to follow Dave. His his uh, collection is insane. 
his uh, output is consistent and super high quality. The man is a photographer, among other things. So do check him out in his awesome collection. BFV Gunner says, Watuaga is a town in Texas, a suburb in the northeast of Fort Worth. So how do you pronounce it? Let me know how you pronounce it. Send cut names a bunch of their knives from towns in Texas. That's cool. Okay, if you can, be a V Gunner, uh, phonetically spell out how how it's to be said, and I will say it that way. I thought it was just some made up gibberish. <laughs> what do I know, man? Uh, everything's made up gibberish until you find out what it means. Gallant Maple, good to have you here, Gallant Maple. The budget knife whore that I am. I like it. Uh, had my CRKT Dextro today. Very nice. CRKT, I love for the fact that they take design risks all the time. And they also bring uh, designs from makers whose uh, work is so astronomically out of reach, uh, within reach. My only beef is that they just need to update their material usage straight across the board straight across the board especially in terms of steel uh but as the joke goes they bought you know the world supply of 8 cr13 mov and they're just going to use it until they're done uh so no shame in that crkt does awesome stuff my favorite for box butchering and cutting my chicken at lunch i was told not to wear my off-grid hoglet which which is a bummer that is a cool one who told you i'm curious was that like a a job thing or was that a cop thing um I'm curious. The hoglet is pretty sweet. Oh, dude. Five door. I was just thinking of this knife yesterday. And, and, and yes. Okay. So five door is carrying the vehement knives mongrel, which is just a cool, uh, 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 modern. It, it, it is sort of, uh, what Jack Wolf knives is to, uh, to the slip joint. Uh, what, the modern folder is to like the 110 it is it is it is a really cool knife anyway and the utx 70 also a cool knife but it won't man the vehement mongrel how do you like it let me know i had the miguron uh josh had the miguron moyarl you know moyarl moyarl and now I'm going to sit here and make fun of it. And then someone's going to come back and say, oh, that's like a, that's a breed of dairy cow. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not made up. Moyarl. Uh, Eugene Crab says, uh, North Arms Knives Skaha 2 autocorrect strikes again. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, the Skaha 2 North Arm Knives, when they came out in 2019-ish or something like that, 2018, they came on and, and, and hit, hit the world by storm with the Skaha too, but they already had, it's a father and son company. They already had a thriving kitchen knife or, or book, you know, book orders of kitchen knives they had to fulfill. So after that first run of Skaha's, they went back and did their kitchen knives and, and perfected the Skaha to come out with the Skaha too. But that took like a couple of years. It, it was sort of like kind of waiting for uh, seasons of game of thrones you know and i i i fear that a little bit of momentum was lost that's that's an interesting thing because you know public taste moves on and things uh you know people get excited now people are just you know so excited about button locks have we already peaked with button locks are we onto something else who knows uh but uh, anyway uh byron kennedy says uh, uh Petrified Fish, 818, you, does it have a name? And the RC Applejack, that's the um, the Rosecraft Applejack. The reason I ask if it has a name, because uh, this, which I'm going to talk about right now, uh, I carried this knife all week. This is a Petrified Fish, and I know it has a number, uh, but when I bought it, it was called the Viking, and uh, so that's that's what I'm calling it. I do not like the number thing. So this is the Petrified Fish Viking, and uh, like most Petrified Fishes, uh, I didn't hear it anything about it coming out or anything. I just saw it one day uh, trolling around on um, Amazon, and I was like, man, I love the look of that. Even though it's called the Viking, to me it looks like a Quaken or something like a Japanese, traditional Japanese-style knife. Whatever you call it, whatever it looks like, it is 
very attractive to me and admittedly that's why i got it but also i knew uh from having the petrified fish victor uh that it would be an excellent build and and from this and from other uh petrified fishes that i have handled it just feels weird saying that from other petrified fishes that i've handled i knew that this would be a good one and uh it is it's a front flipper primarily uh, and it is a great front flipper. Look, I can even do it with my left hand. And um, but also it's got this little weird fuller diagonally oriented uh, that I think looks cool. And it also makes it look kind of like a cockpit on a F-111 or I don't know. It's just kind of cool looking. Uh, and uh, I can also get the reverse flick out of that or a slow roll with the thumb out of that if I pinch especially. Um, but this thing is very thin and it cuts great. I've just been using it for everything for a week and, and I'm starting to do that more and more. And uh, I recently dipped into the collection and uh, well, uh, I've done this recently with knives like the, um, like the Civivi uh, Praxis where I carried this a lot for about a week, like mostly. And uh, then when I got the Kaiser Mad Tonto, I did the same thing. Those are two handsome knives. Uh, I did the same thing. I'm starting to get into that uh, more and more uh, just to kind of really get to. These knives are all excellent. I like uh, the knives. I haven't been buying folders as much as I had been recently. I've been getting a lot more fixed blades. So now when I'm getting them folders, uh, I'm really appreciating them and carrying them more. And this damn thing is awesome. And it comes in a number of colorations. If you like this really nice blue uh, linen my car or, uh, canvas micarta, it comes in that with a black blade, which looks just so cool. Uh, but I, I really wanted this green. And this green, as it turns out, is more of a forest green than an OD green. And I really like that. Uh, I, I get a little tired of the OD green, you know, um, not everything is has to be militaristic uh, looking, and I certainly am was was never into the zombie green, or or Kelly green or anything like that. So to have a nice sort of forest green, the kind of green that you that you get your Jaguar or your Range Rover in, uh, I like that. And I'm I'm just I'm seeing it start to patina where my fingers are, but uh, I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to have a slow hand with this. Uh, I really like this knife and uh, I need to appreciate, I got so much. And uh, before I sell some of it, uh, I need to appreciate it all and, and, you know, kind of be grateful for what I got and carry it and, and use it. These things are all like pretty, all really nice knives. Uh, Kent McNessart says today I am carrying a Malone knives woods muck. Ooh, that sounds cool. Uh, the bark river knives, mini kephart the bear forest knives gt3 giant mouse atelier that's cool that's the small version of the of the grand of the ground uh, jack wolf knives low drag jack very sweet and the wingard wearables quill and that is one of these suckers in case you are wondering these are so cool especially i love this grip what's your favorite grip let me know what your favorite grip is uh, i call this a hammer fist grip uh, he calls that a haymaker grip. Uh, that's just a weird, that's a punch that no one should do. Uh, and then, uh, you can, you can grip it in a bunch of different ways. Uh, but very cool little implement of chaos is the quill. Six Semper Tyrannus says, I just made a Kydex sheath for an old Bark River Knives STS-4. Very cool. I should have done it years ago. So Six Semper, when I first started making Kydex and I, I do it, rarely now um but uh, when i first started making it i was very excited about this newly acquired skill uh but wasn't quite uh, hip to the fact that if you get little kydex shavings and stuff down in the sheath you just scratch the hell out of your blade and uh you know kydex already kind of can can scratch up your blade a little bit but but uh, my very sec my first sheath was awesome. It was a slam dunk, uh, beginner's luck. It was amazing, uh, everything about it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, good, I've mastered this. 
And uh, let me do it with my, you know, most prized knife uh, at the time. And that was my my Cold Steel uh, Tonto, Master Tonto from the late 80s. And I made this sheath and I and it just big scratch down the blade and uh, oh, killed me. Anyway, sorry. I, I, I hope your experience with Kydex is is better than well mine has gotten better i learned but i learned the hard and painful way will b says had my grimsmo norseman uh pro tech california custom knife show mordax uh spider co smock kaiser big lighter xl spider co ronin 2 which i happen to be carrying tonight uh and but he's got a cool custom sheath riot exo also cool the olight baton 3 the i3t which i like a lot and the Keras bolt v2 very cool uh, always a nice carry from Wilby, and it seems like the grimsmo norseman is quite frequently the main character i gotta sheath this because even though i have knives on the table gotta have a knife on me what if i jump up and have to run out the door i know i could grab one of these but it would be like which one i'll take this no uh, that's not utilitarian enough what if this emergency requires and i can't do any of that i just gotta get up and run uh gaston says pocket check sog terminus xr that's a great one uh that was the first really good xr lock from them i think in my opinion that i experienced and then switch to the 940 osborne later in the afternoon after sharpening it nice i call that a wardrobe change you know like coming home from work and putting on that that pair of jeans that's just so comfortable or whatever it is that pair of shorts or sweatpants or whatever same thing with knives uh bfv gunner says bob terzuola designed from the late 90s uh it's the compact version oh yes of the camilla cqcb which is which is a full-size sheathy knife it's like an early version of the soon to come mkm tpf the Camillus, uh, I had a version of that uh, here that I was supposed to fix for an old uh, work acquaintance, uh, and I just couldn't. But it, it was it was one of those Camillus knives, and it looked like a Terzuola design, but it had this weird button thing on the side uh, that required you to push this button in a channel that was V-shaped, and once you did that, the blade would magically come out. It was it was. It was convoluted and didn't work uh, at its best. So I, I'm just curious if, if you had better luck with that. Of course, I told him, yeah, I can fix it. And I, I had no idea how to fix it and couldn't. Uh, but I'm wondering if it's the same knife and if you had a different experience. Ken Kaufman says, Kershaw Shuffle 2. A Kershaw Shuffle. Oh, Kershuffle. Gotcha. Right. Kershaw Shuffle. Uh, Mutiny Grimm says Guy Saintrop is from UK. That's a cool name, Saintrop. It's kind of like um, I don't know what do they what do they call it the the civilian or the street name of a superhero, Wayne Saintrop. Uh, Cheeto Bandito says Pocket Check Cold Steel Fin Wolf, an excellent choice, sir. Remington Baby Bullet. We talked about that last week, and the Streamlight Micro Stream. I like that Fin Wolf. I got one for my brother. And uh, he he carries it a lot, especially he goes camping uh, in the Sierra Nevadas uh, or Sierra Madres. I can't remember which one um, in the summer. And he brings that. It's his favorite knife to bring. Uh, Mutiny Grimm says, wow, that Yojimbo is custom made. No, 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 no. Uh, this this Ronin 2 uh, is the same knife that Will B was carrying today. But Will B has a custom sheath that he got for his. I still just have my Spyderco sheath, which is gigantic. It's like the state of Wisconsin right here. It's huge. Um, but uh, Will was telling me that he got a taco sheath, so it doesn't have that portion, and then it's a lot slimmer on the bottom. So I need to look into that. And then every time I think I need to look into that, I'm like, no, you just need to make one yourself. It is within your capability. Just do it, you lazy bones. Mad Hatter says, Spyderco Phil Wilson Sprig in S90V. That's cool. Uh, the Sharp by Design Mini Evo Harpoon, also cool. And the JE made Lanny's Clip Compound Ground Slippy 3, M, uh, M390. Okay, 
J.E. made, I know, Lanny's clip, I know, but compound ground Lanny's clip, please describe. Is this a, a like a very unique blade shape for a slip joint? Is it some sort of a tanto or, or, or sponto type thing? Let me know. I'm curious. Razorback says, love that Spyderco, mate. That Navaja click. Oh, yes. Uh, thinking of cutting a few ratchet teeth humps before the lock in my Espada goes click like a real one. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting too. So on the Navaja in the um, in the Spyderco Ethnic series, they made the lock uh, similar to the traditional Navaja with the ratchet. With the ratchet. So it has a number of stops on the way up open mm. and closed. So I, I thought that was kind of cool. Mini tack Bowie says Ken Kaufman. I have a mini tack Bowie on the way might even be upstairs. Um, I had to get some, uh, some garments and, uh, and I needed to try something out. So I ordered it online uh, from a famous purveyor of goods online and they also happen to sell a cold steel and boom what do you know a mini tag bowie which was recommended i mean i didn't want to be rude uh ended up in my order so i'm excited to get that uh well also because i adopted this uh from dave and it it goes with my kiridashi and now i'm thinking i need to fill out this section of my cold steel collection which is out of hand at this point joseph s says at kaiser escort that's a cool one. That's a Pinkerton. I like Pinkerton. I love Pinkerton uh, knives. Mini Sheepdog Rafir. Oh, with the Rafir Noble. That is cool. Yes. Uh, I think that's a little bit radioactive, isn't it? So you got that going for you. The ro uh, Roadrunner. Again, the Rough Rider Canoe Copper Swirl. Love it. I like that Copper Swirl line in general. And the and the uh, Rough Rider fixed blade drop point. What do you think of that? Let me know. I do have um, my Rough Rider uh, fixed blade uh, mule, black mule Bowie, handleless right now, waiting uh, to be mounted in one of the beautiful pieces of wood that Byron Kennedy sent me. I'm looking at them right now, and I'm going to use the walnut. And I don't know. It's probably about four maybe three weekends from now where I can actually do something, um, which I look forward to, like just do something. That's not like taking someone somewhere or watching someone do something or take someone and eat with someone. You know what I'm saying? BFV Gunner says, what, what, uh, Gua, wait, wait, what, uh, Gua, what, uh, Gua, what, uh, Gua. I think Watagua. Watagua. What? Uh, oh, now I'm looking at the spelling. Watagua. Huh. Uh. Well, you know what's weird is that locals frequently will pronounce things. And now I'm trying to think of a an example. But I know in Ohio, uh, the state in which I grew up, um, I still I still love Ohio. I don't live there, but I, I still love it. Uh, but there are many townships there named after places, say, in France or in, you know, somewhere in Italy. And it's not pronounced or somewhere in Europe, I mean, and it's just not pronounced the way you know it should be pronounced because it's a French name, but it you know, is the name of a town in the heartland. And that's not how they pronounce it. And uh I love that kind of thing. So maybe that's why it's Watagua instead of Watuaga. Um, but thank you. Thank you for that. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, Dave uh, changed me from a Tanto Sayer to a Tanto Sayer just by saying, well, the Japanese say Tanto. I was like, well, okay, better say it myself. Uh, uh, Blade Ogre says, Brass Brigade made the sleazy ogre J. Cal fixie. Brass Brigade. Oh, that's right. Yeah, his fixed blades are sweet. I mean, we know him for the uh, for the Grant Gripper, uh, but his fixed blades are awesome. Uh, the bodega is in D2 and G10 for a little over a hundred bucks. Not crazy about the frame lock on it due to deadlock. Okay, 
but had to get the bodega as well. It's such a beautiful and um, iconic design. Uh, I, I, iconic is like epic. I, 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 I'm very cautious about using it loosely. Uh, Razorback says, uh, today's carry is the tie light six in waistband. Oh, okay. The big ass. Okay. The tie light six in the waistband, the para three with a super th thin regrind. That sounds cool. And the Espada XL. Jeez. Why are you carrying that? that that's that been reprofiled to look like a giant talwar. How cool. So flat, it disappears in the Milwaukee jacket. Get out of here. So is this a spot of XL, which has been reprofiled to look like a giant talwar in G10? Uh, is it one of the G10 versions or is it the dressed up version? It's got to be. It's got to be the, the G10 version if it's thin enough to go in the Milwaukee jacket. Pretty cool. Speaking of which, Mike Flamian, Model 16, Randall Model 16, and the Koenig Arius Spider, uh, very nice, and the Spyderco Arc Neck Knife, also cool. Uh, about the 16, um, is it this 16, the one uh, that came out a couple of years ago, the special fighter with the number one blade on it? I'm curious, because the other 16s have a different kind of drop point blade, right? Because it's a dive knife and it has serrations. Which which one did you carry today? Uh, not that those are your only two choices, but those are the only ones I know. Ah, love this. This this is a such a nice one. It feels so good. Ah, Edgy American says, "I love the idea of button lock, but a bore of them uh, very. But I bore of them very quickly. Even my Mordax. Interesting. Do you, do you, do you mean? I'm curious, Shane. Do you mean that you?" You bore just of fidgeting in general, or I, I wish I could just have this at work and explain myself with this in my hand. Does that mean that you you bore with fidgeting quickly or button lock in general? Yeah, or or only the button lock. Like if you have, say, a, a very nice axis lock like this uh, bug out, which is, this is an excellent axis lock. I know we all love all the other companies, but Benchmade also does it really well. Um, but you know could you would you bore of this or are you just saying fidgeting is fun for a little while but it's not all about that uh yeah and and also there have been some issues with a few button locks and i think uh people like freak out uh five door says absolutely love the mongrel simple impeccable build quality and it's an easy carry nice mongrel good name too Kane A, good to see you here, Kane. Evening, everyone. Half face blades. Uh drugger. Half face blades make some cool stuff. Auxiliary design bottle rockets. Sweet. I, I love his stuff. He was on here a couple weeks ago. And the large Sabenza 31 in Singo in Magna Cut uh, in the carry for today. That is really nice. So the Sabenza 31 in Magna Cut. Kane, have you um have you noticed? Any uh, differences in Magna Cut uh, in sharpening or using? Um, I don't have one. I have not one knife in Magna Cut. And I would really, you know, I, I kind of feel like it's a moral imperative at this point. Um, first, for two reasons. First of all, it's Magna Cut and I should have it and experience it, especially at its at a good heat treat, A and B. Uh, I, I have I have this uh, justification for hoarding as many knives as possible by saying, oh, well, I interviewed that person, so I have to have something by them in my collection. And in this case, I've interviewed Laren Thompson twice, and I do not have Magna Cut. So I need to get something in Magna Cut. What should it be? Should it be, should I get something from Transparent Knives, actually, and kill two birds with one stone? Because I also interviewed uh, Brian. Should I do that? That's probably, I think I just decided. I think I just decided what I'm going to do, and maybe I'll 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 get a I'll I'll get a uh, make up for that ugly shark's tooth blade. Um, anyway, I'll 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 go on in here. Anthony, good to have you here tonight. I got the BPS BS one FTS. It's a great little buddy fixed blade. Okay, BPS BS one FTS rolls off the tongue. What is this? The BPS. BPS, BPS. 
Give me a little, a little more information, Anthony. You're like, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to mind speak it to you? Yeah, actually, if you could send me a picture, <laughs> that'd be cool. No, BPS. Uh, I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue. Acta non verba. Mike Flamian, Acta non verba makes a version of the Applegate Fairbairn you should get. I know. I agree. It is beautiful. And it's big. It's like an eight-inch blade or something or, or seven and a half. It's a, it's a big one, too. It's beautiful. Um, thank you. Thanks for the tip. One minute knife review. Good to have you here, man. Hello, everybody. Hello yourself. Uh, Kent McNesshart. Uh, I like the hammer grip for the quill too. Yes. Okay, cool. Because it also feels like, um, up front, it gives you a little bit of knuck, you know, if you, if you hit this way. I'm not big into fist loads. I think it's a good way to mess up your fist, but this is so thin. Um, you know, it's like, it's barely there. Uh, the only thing is, is you may experience if you, if you try and hit straight on, you might experience this rolling and then it'll really hurt like hell. Uh, but really a hammer fist is the way to go with this. Josh, uh, Gijo grip. What does that mean? Oh, wait, wait, GI Joe grip. Okay. <laughs> I got, I knew it like, uh, for a second, it took me a second. And then, and then it took me all the way back to the seventies. I had the big GI Joes guys. When the little ones came out, I'm like, they're just biting off the star Wars action figures. But then, uh, my friend who was a little bit younger than I, uh, got some, see, I was the youngest. So uh, I was trying to always be, uh, trying always to be older and move on. But I had the big, anyway, I had the GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Uh, one minute knife review says, Today had the Protex Strider, S, uh, Strider SNG operator in pocket. That is a beaut, especially in the in the operator version. I had the one with the American flag, um, G Carta. That was very nice. I sold that to Nick Martino, edgy American. If someone threw all slip joints and front flippers in the fire, I'd add the gas. Oh, what about live and let live, bro? What about live and let live? I love that. Well, I would. No, I wouldn't. I was going to say, I would jump in and rescue them. No, I would. I would keep what I have and not let anyone throw my slip joints in the fire. Oh, Razorback says Filipino forward grip. Filipino forward grip. With the thumb. Beef Baron. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going, Beefer Baron? Good to have you with us. Uh, we, uh, good evening. What's up, man? Have a nice day. Good evening, he says. I was just uh, mentioning earlier how I like how this shirt shrank because it, it makes me look big. <laughs> so thanks, man. Now, this is Have a Knife Day's beautiful uh, knife with the Western-style Bowie on front. Don't tread on me. Great messaging. You got the cat up to no good have a knife day and if you've ever seen his videos which you should you'll you'll know his black cat and he just came back from the bowie festival the james black bowie festival uh, i always forget the full name uh but you'll you'll fill us in some really cool stuff you gotta check out professor edc bob jim and my fellow knife brothers hope everyone is doing well well it's awesome to have you here professor edc always great as usual um ED, uh, speaking of which, you got to check out Professor EDC too for his Bladeosophy videos. Awesome stuff. Blade Obsession, wanting to see if I can get used to the cold steel. Oh, yeah. The Espada Large, no problem. Uh, Blade Obsession, it's good to have you here. And um, uh, I find that both versions are good. Uh, but of course the G10 version is a little more slender and lighter. So you probably want to go with that uh, if you're not sure if you can carry it at all. Oh, I did recently see you can occasionally find the small version, which is actually named the medium, uh, which they don't make anymore. Excuse me on the secondary. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm taking you on this gastrointestinal <laughs> journey with me. Have a knife day says, Went to a town called Solvang and picked up a Sinkovich ZT0642 red carbon fiber. Very nice. I, I used to have that knife and um, I sold it to get something else. 
Uh, but I love Sinkovich designs and he's got, oh, you should check him out on Instagram. He's got a really cool wine key um, that I would love to have. And, and, you know, just slick as can be. And, and uh, I used to drink a lot of wine and um, I always wanted that thing. I'd still like to have it. Uh, Luis Rodriguez says Hawkbill knife for work. Luis, Luis or Luis. Good to have you here. Well, I'm going to say Luis. Good to have you here. Hawkbill knife for work on the belt. The mini mod Stroop knife Pical style. Very nice. Uh, I love Stroop knives. And the cold steel talon serrated. Uh, oh, great. The black talon serrated. I have that knife. That's my winter coat knife on the inside pocket. I just, I just changed the clip to left and then you can pull it out of the pocket and draw it. Plus that knife will go through anyone else's winter jacket like that. Unless the whole thing's made out of Kevlar. Byron Kennedy says like bladesmithing, the 2023 YouTube chopper challenge is on 20 challenges. Six judges build their best chopping blades and you get to vote. CB cone knives, chopper video notes, for all videos and vote links. That's cool. That sounds awesome, man. I, I would love to check that out. I, that, Let's see. Uh, I think Tyrell Bladeworks won that last year. Is that right? Lots of talent. Uh, lots of amazing talent. And uh, a lot of them are on Instagram. That's how I find a lot of uh, people who make beautiful knives that I invite onto the show. Uh, but even there are a lot of people who aren't even there. And then you might find them on YouTube doing challenges like this. So a great place to find new talent. And I got to say, I'm a big proponent of get in early on uh, talented knife makers, you know, like here's the, uh, here's one from, from BGM. Uh, I just actually recently wrapped jute cord around the handle just to make it a little bigger for my hand. And um, I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks, you know, I'm a sucker for jute cord. Um, but I had to start it up here because the sheath is so high. And the sheath is so tight on this thing uh, that I just needed a little more gription. Um, so anyway, but whatever. My point is getting in uh, at the beginning of someone's a talented knife maker's career is a great thing. You can get knives um, that are really nice for relatively little. And then as as their careers grow, uh, you, you you kind of go along with them. It's kind of sweet. Uh, N. Conway, good to have you here. And Western Reserve Cutlery Association annual knife show is later this month. Massillon, Ohio. All are welcome. N. Conway, uh, that would be my cutlery show uh, if I were where I grew up. How cool is that? Uh, lots of Western uh, Reserve um uh, uh, case western reserve in in my family and and uh and all of that um that whole area so that's cool to see thank you for mentioning it here edgy american says in alabama it's what watagua oh that's that's a good one what watagua. watagua i guess i could see that watagua senka watagua uh bf bfv gunner says oh geez uh Wachita, Washita, Wichita, all pronounced roughly the same. Wachuaga is probably one of those names, uh, but I'll bet Edgy American has it right. Okay, okay. Uh, Wachita, Washita, and Wichita. You know what's funny is that there are some, you know, as I was just mentioning, I grew up in Northeast Ohio, and there are plenty like Cuyahoga County, and uh, there are a lot of Indian... American Native American names um, in that area, and you get used to them and you learn how to say them very easily. Cuyahoga, no, no big deal. But then other people see it and they're like, "Hmm, how, the, how do you?" So just reading those three, uh, it's kind of the same experience. If you've been living in that area and saying those things all your life, it's easy. Uh, Blade Obsession says, "I own more Cold Steel than any other brand." Here, here, me too, brother. Great knives. I couldn't agree more. I love cold steel and yeah. And, and the worst thing is, is now there are all of these, uh, you know, things, things get discontinued and, uh, and then you try and find them and they're for ridiculous prices. Like I want the desperado. I always wanted the desperado and then I never got it. 
and then it went and then it was discontinued uh flip solo says a randall mm, drool yes i love randall i'll put this under the knife cam actually let me let me highlight another knife uh right here i love this thing and uh i just pulled this out to appreciate it i i don't edc this it's just slightly too large uh this is the medium fighter from uh attention to detail mercantile douglas esposito uh s35 vn quad hollow ground it's hollow ground on the bayonet uh and edged it's a double edge beautiful uh this is my first custom knife ever and custom knife through and through in that uh, you know i ordered the finish and the and the handle material i love uh tortoise shell this is of course is imitation tortoise shell uh, brass liners to me this is like a classy assassin's knife <laughs> you know this this would be actually a great one for john john wick maybe not john wick himself but for that movie series you know maybe a different one of those people uh, one of the assassins, John Wick, you know, he's got it. He's not a fixed blade guy so much, and he's got to have an out the front. It's just part of his brand at this point. Uh, but this knife, I think, would feature nicely in that movie. Uh, but uh, why did I bring this out? I think just to show it off because I love it. Uh, B. Walsh, good to see you here, B. Walsh. Spartan Harsey, four inch plague doctor. Love the Spartan Harsey. Love that knife. Thinking about having mine reground and making it hollow ground, uh, but I'm just. Uh, I just don't have the energy to send it out. <laughs> uh, Mike Flamian says, yes, the 16 special number one fighter. I have both border patrol handle and the, and the black finger grooved my 16 special number one fighter. So you have, you have this one except with, with black my And then you have this one with the border patrol handle, which what is that? That's one finger groove we talked about this i'm sorry man <laughs> but it's like one finger groove and then the rest is like a, uh, a a gentle swell any case uh i i think you have an enviable uh randall knives collection because you also have the 14 attack which is which is you know if there is a next randall in my collection that has most definitely got to be it. I love that knife. A BVF Gunner says that Randall 16 reminded me the Chimera blade is like that, but probably more like the 14, but without the thumb finger notch past the guard. Uh, 8.25 inches. Oh, nice. Of two. It, okay, I wrote that down. Of a uh, 0.2 inch thick 1095. That sounds so great. That sounds awesome. Uh, I don't fidget much anyway, but I don't care for the button lock. No idea why. They just don't get pocket time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for me, I think I think it it it's a uh, a come and go kind of thing. Bob, you can visit the oh yes. <gasps> oh, are you gonna be at the booth? Ah, uh, he's so cool. Uh, you can visit me. Uh, visit the ABW booth with me and get your Magna Cut fix. I will actually. I, I would love to get a uh, a Model Two. I think it's beautiful. I think the Model Two looks. I mean, design wise, man, it looks like something from the '30s. You know, uh, I, I think it's a beautiful design. It, it's kind of Art Deco-y or something. Can't quite put my finger on it, but I think it's a. I think it's a. Um, it's a very mature design. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's a beautiful design. BFG Gunner says, go with the transparent, go with the transparent knives. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I might because he is so vigilant and, um, well, truly interested and fascinated with the heat treat and his grinds are just insane. So yeah, I probably will. Plus it'll, 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 uh, It'll get me across a couple of, uh, it'll kill a couple of birds with one stone. Razorback says, yep, G10, only a hair thicker than the Para 3 lightweight. Definitely get a transparent reed blade for your 20.5. Yeah, you know what, though? I am I was thinking about that as I was saying it. I would just I would just get a whole new, an, an additional 20.5. The 20.5, I got uh, John Demko of Demko Knives sent to me 
I mean, I still had to pay for it, but he, he went out of his way to make sure I got one when they were hard to get. And I appreciate that. So I'm going to leave it as is. I carried that also on my 50th birthday and did a lot of, uh, party prep and i have some memories built up in that one i'll keep that one as it as it is in its ugliness uh and that's only you know that's like et ugliness you're you know et the extraterrestrial ugly but cute you know uh but i would get a whole new thing with the titanium handles and the whole the whole godilla maybe even a cool interesting blade shape kevin moore says well i say to you kevin good evening sir how are you? Hope you're doing well. Kevin Moore says, evening, y'all. Hoping your Thursday Night Knives is top notch. Kevin's got a cool collection, too. You put up an, a cool little video uh, a couple of days ago on Instagram. And it was kind of a panning shot. And you had a knife in there. And I can't remember what it is now. But I was a little bit surprised. Oh, it was the Locust. You had the QSP Locust in your in your little shot, in your little cool panning shot and i had your quill and um i thought it was cool because i i had just given away the locust or was about to um no i guess i had already given it away and i thought it was a cool coincidence because that's not a knife you see too often uh but it's a it's a nice one have a knife day says i am working on my next generation t-shirt clip joint s guard coffin handle bowie oh yeah love it love it the james black a lack a bowie heritage festival the j that was a typo james black bowie right james a lack yeah james black uh bowie heritage festival home of james black and maker of bowie number one made a coffin bowie knife for jim bowie yeah and and i think it's the one yeah with that with that cool canted uh blade one minute knife review says got a squall last week from luck knives sweet in Terravantium. Jeez. Loving it. Loving it. Oh, so he was just a uh, NAF sergeant squall. Uh, squ I mean, I'm sorry. Luck knives uh, was just on the show a couple weeks ago uh, showing off the squall. And um, yeah, I fell in love with that knife. It It is a beauty. And then the way he's grinding it, uh, I, I, I can't wait to hear about it. I can't wait to hear about it. Tell it, tell us more, tell it. So it's in Terravantium. Let me know what the, uh, the blade finish is like, cause I don't know what you can do with Terravantium and tell us what the, um, the handle, uh, the handle material is and, and put the name of the knife in the comment. <laughs> so my, my old ass doesn't forget what we're talking about. Burnt toast says, well, hello to you, Burnt Toast. I love the name. You should check out the Copper Creek Knives. This is not the first time I'm hearing this. Yeah. Uh, Derek is an amazing maker. Writing it down. Just to be sure. Copper Creek Knives. Uh, Derek is an amazing maker. I'm carrying one of his pocket Bowies in 52100 with Vist. Uh, okay. Uh, you got me. You got me. Pocket Bowie, 52100 and Vintage Westinghouse. Uh, sounds beautiful. I can't wait to check him out. And that that knife in general sounds beautiful. Uh, Louisville, Lou, uh, <laughs> Byron Kennedy. Okay, the, here are, here are some here are examples how different things can be called different things. Louisville, Louisville, Lou, Louis, Louisville or Louisville, Lou, Louisville, Louisville, <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that where you're from, Byron? Not, not that it's any of our damn business, but Louisville, I like that. That's hilarious, man. Uh, Have a Knife Day says, the knife on the new shirt was made by Mark McCoon of DeWitt, Virginia. McCoon, who's this guy? Oh, that's someone else. Um, I have a card here from someone else from Virginia uh, of DeWitt, Virginia. That sounds cool. Massillon is a little far for me to travel. I'm down by Cincinnati and Dayton. How cool. I, I I think I knew that uh, we had a bunch of Ohio boys here, but uh, I, I, then I forgot. Uh, Louisville, Looneyville. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's like when I lived in Philadelphia in the early 90s, we called it filthy. I, I, you know, I don't know if it still goes by that, but uh, One Minute Knife Review says that fighter is really nice. Yes, I, I he says very nice. I put really. I agree. Let me show you another cool fighter just because it's out and about. Um, 
I sent you a text, Bob. Top secret stuff. Cool. Can't wait to check it out. EDC. Good. Uh, good. To, <laughs> Shane, I will check it out after the show. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm on tenter hooks now because Shane sends me juicy stuff. EDC. Good to see you, EDC. I like I like your very meta name. Uh, good morning from the UK. Oh, awesome. Good. Good to uh, have you listening from there. We have a couple of people uh, from across the shock listening and that's awesome. Good to have you here with us. Mr. Greg T says, Bob, have you an Emerson super CQ seven? I want to, uh, you want to sell, uh, no, but I do have a super CQ seven that I want to keep. Um, interesting story about that CQ seven, uh, CQC seven. It was donated to the channel. Um, and, uh, by, uh, I think it was by Stu or will uh, i can't remember who donated it now uh, this is a few years back we auctioned it my brother bought it and then he gave it to me and that was not an inside job believe me but uh so i gotta keep it and i love it so sorry one minute knife review says i had to jump on it uh the blade is satin the squall high flat grind uh but he made he made another with hollow grind the scales are g-i-t-d and teal blue g10 what the hell is g-i-t-d uh, i'm not sure what that is g-i-t but teal blue that sounds that sounds beautiful uh i think his stuff is awesome and i think he shows uh amazing promise i mean he has not been doing it for very long in his work i mean at least from pictures and you know pictures don't really lie they look awesome uh but until you start cutting with him, you don't know. But I also happen to know that he's a very, uh, he's a big, 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 big knife guy. So he's not going to skimp on heat treat and he's not going to, um, you know, he's going to do a good job. Razorback says, ha ha, understandable. I won't regrind or mod a few of the knives I carry, carry at my wedding. Uh, I reckon the Japanese are onto something with the whole inanimate objects developing souls yokai with age yokai that's a cool word yeah 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 i mean i i i sort of believe some of that uh like the things on the wall behind me um are authentic and i wonder what they saw uh they uh and some of them may have seen the insides of other people and some of them just may have been sitting in rooms for decades i i just don't know um you know i know that this one was in the house i grew up in uh because my dad got that when he was a, when he was a, so in the, I, I don't, I don't remember where he got that, but he got it somewhere before he married my mom. So that's been around. Uh, but you know, before that it had a whole other life before that in the Philippines. And I just wonder what these things saw. Um, so yokai, I kind of believe it. Uh, one minute knife review says glow in the dark. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Glow in the dark boomer. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, uh, X Xer or whatever you call Gen X. Uh, Byron Kennedy says, Bob, I lived in Louisville for five years and still don't know how to say it right when I left. That's funny. Louisville. Lots of cool places in this country. Um, we were talking about that fighter before. Let me show you this fighter. I know I show it all the time, but, uh, I just have to show it off. Uh, and then I want to show you the knife we're going to give away in the gentleman junkie knife giveaway. Uh, this month, uh, but this is this is my hogtooth knives, one hundred thousand percent custom made, um, Bob Loveless style uh, sub hilt fighter, and it's got a very special um, uh, Damascus steel, fully double edged, long slender clip point, like a like that sort of black bear classic uh uh sub hilt fighter and then stag I love stag i had to have stag on it and then these hilts are or the uh hilt and the sub hilt are first of all beautifully shaped i think and very very comfortable especially this one which needs to be comfortable because it's going between your fingers um uh they are made from wrought iron from the good fellow wait no the longfellow bridge in boston so cool history in the knife and uh just a thing of beauty and an incredible sheath and just a great knife this was a gift to me from my parents upon turning half a hundred 
So uh, you want to talk fighters? This is this would be the dual knife. You know, whoosh, I get slapped across the face with a leather glove, and it's you know, meet me at dawn, and it's knives, knives at dawn. That's the knife I bring. Uh, but you know, I'd have a couple extra, extra backups. James Moore, good to have you here, James. Hi, folks. Looks like I have a lot to catch up on. Well, you know, James, it's the usual conversation. Um, we're talking about responsible investing in edged weaponry. Uh, B for Baron says, holy shit, look at that dude, seriously. Ooh. Oh, this one. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. I mean, <clears throat> always, always loved the sub hilt fighter. I mean, like ever since I was a young pup and I, I don't know, I don't know where I first saw one, uh, but it certainly wasn't at the Remington cutlery in the Randall Park Mall. <laughs> Luck Knives, your ears must have been burning or ringing, sir. Uh, good to have you here, Luck Knives. We were just talking with uh, someone who just bought a Taravantium uh, squall from you, and it sounds absolutely dope. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, all has been into the sub hilt fighters. So to finally, finally get one, especially such a special one uh, made by someone who has now become my friend who is making the uh, the Nova ones. It's a big, it, it's, it is a prized, if not the prized knife here, uh, besides the one my grandfather have given me. Uh, BFV Gunner says, Yowza, that's truly wearable art. Yeah, yeah, wearable art that will get taken from you right quick, even though we have the right to carry it. Uh, but you never know. Burnt Toast says, I don't care for sub-hilt knives, but every time you show that off, it makes me think I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, burnt toast, you know, to each his own. Um, but, and it might not be for you, but you can appreciate it. You know, um, what I like is that it, it makes, it's a great system for fight, not system. It's a great design for fighting because, uh, for all different types of fighting, but I know a lot of people, especially with Bowie fighting, which comes kind of from saber fighting, there's a lot of, uh, kind of percussive, uh, hits and slashes and stuff. And you and you might be holding it a little bit more like this. So to have that trigger between your finger is good for retention, but also for um, removing it from your adversary's ribs once you've thrust it in. I think I think that's part of what that's for. Um, and I have to say, it's a little like until I. It's a little confusing when you first see it, and it's a little intimidating. It's like, ooh, is this a special? Like what? Well. It should be. Agent Orange Peel, nice to see you here, sir. I've never seen a sub hilt. Is that for show or for purpose? That's a beautiful knife. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a, uh, it is for that purpose, for uh, retention, uh, for, um, for, especially for extraction. And, um, you know, it gives you, it gives you a lot of different options. Now, the, the thing you want to avoid is, an uncomfortable one. He's made this incredibly comfortable to hold. Um, but I would imagine something that's sharp uh, between your fingers would feel terrible, you know, or too thick or something like that. Uh, one minute knife review says punching to the sub hilt. Oh yeah. 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 I didn't think of that. Yeah. Really right there. Boom. Mm. Yeah. Mostly it's just a, a work of art. These, uh, these studs, holding the stag to the frame which is attached to the tang uh are silver I, I mean this thing is this thing is insanely beautifully done Bernto says i've come from a world of simplicity wait i come from a world of simplicity in the handle i worked on the water for a long time and spent hours a day with a fillet knife in hand but that is beautiful if nothing else yes yes for sure this is uh this is not your daily uh, driver, uh, but but even even a um, even a less fancy version of this, I, I think that this is pretty specialized for fighting. I mean, I guess you know, as they say, your mileage may vary. Some people might do tons of hard work with, like, for instance, the um, what is, the hell is it called the 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 big Bowie knife by cold steel that has the sub hilt, I guess maybe people do work with that knife. Uh, but yeah, it, it seems like a more specialized uh, thing with that sub hilt for fighting. And, and chances are, if you're fighting with a knife, you're not holding it for hours on end, like you were your fillet knife. 
Um, man, oh, I bet you have some mad skills. Uh, people who work in kitchens, people who work at, at, at fisheries and butchers and and uh, slaughterhouses. Is that what they call them? Slaughterhouses? Uh, have great, great knife skills. Mr. Greg T says, cold steel mini tacks have the same handle design. Great retention feature. Yes. Yes. Right. Very, very on topic. Uh, this, <coughs> oh, excuse me. This one uh, is a mini tack. And yeah, that, that sub hilt is great, especially for a three finger knife. It's like pretty much essential. And then, and then man, it just stays in hand. This thing is awesome. Beaver Baron says it really is a work of art and yes, totally insane. I concur. Um, yeah. And you know, uh, uh, total, you know, one might say wretched excess it, in my case. I don't think so because, you know, thinking about how, um, people, people who, you know, small things like disposable quote-unquote disposable income is on things that they like sometimes it's tv a lot of people like electronics and new phones and stuff like that for us it's not well, i'm not gonna say for us for me it's not any of that stuff which is good because if i were a collector of multiple things not just knives i'd be in big trouble uh but luckily it's just knives um you know i like other things i like cool boots i like guns i like watches i like pens and if I became a hardcore collector of any of those things, not good. BFV Gunner says, well, folks, got to get up early for a thing in the AM. Uh, good knife, everyone, and stay sharp. BFV Gunner, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. It's great to see you here again this week. Have a great weekend. Because after all, Thursday Night Knives, the start of the weekend. I'm going to do maybe, you know, maybe we cut some liners. Brandon Sutton, good to see you here, Brandon. The Loveless Big Bear and the Entrek Silhouette are some of my favorite sub hilts. Entrek, whatever happened to Entrek? Those knives are so cool. And uh, like maybe it was the early 2000s, uh, I felt like they peaked and I, I saw them places, but I haven't seen Entrek in a long time. Very cool. Uh, American made fixed blade. Uh, tactical knives very very cool mr greg t i thank you sir look at this this is awesome thank you i appreciate you man and i am going to salute you with a cool knife greg t which should it be i've already shown this one off and i've shown that one off uh oh, well i think let's bring out this one i haven't shown this one off in a little while i want to thank you with <coughs> i salute you with this Shining Mountain Bowie, uh, the this seminal blade design, Bowie blade design by Mike Stewart uh, of Blackjack Knives, and then later of uh, Bark River Knives, and he is, uh, man, he's the guy who came up with this beautiful shape. Uh, we saw it, I think, first in who, one of the gun companies, Remington maybe, uh, did a, a, or Winchester, I think. Winchester did this Bowie first, and then Blackjack with the with the Anaconda, I think it was called, and then Bark River Knives with the Shining Mountain. And then we saw this knife, this blade, I should say, uh, on the beautiful stag hilt of, uh, what was his name? Aldo Rain in, um, in Inglorious Bastards. It's just a great blade. And I feel like it's it's a real, I don't know, of all the Bowie blades, it's kind of like this Western style Bowie. It's a very iconic blade shape at this point, um, this particular Bowie. And this particular knife is really awesome. I haven't, honestly, have never used it for anything. Uh, I think I may have done a cut test or two with it, uh, but Kep McNesshart took this out and earned it its bones out in the wilderness somewhere and sent me pictures. <laughs> like uh, it's, it's funny uh someday someday i'll take you out it's like rocco we don't go out no more rocco all right mr greg t thank you so much for that super chat i greatly appreciate it here's to you sir and there is your salute and here's a little flyby a little drive-by of this beautiful knife all right thank you so much <laughs> thanks bob good night he says thank you mr greg i really appreciate it thanks for thanks for coming uh six emperor says fml 
let me get you a, I'm sorry. Let me tell you about my traditional muzzle loaders. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, burnt toast says, have a great night, everyone. Happy start of the weekend. Need my beauty sleep to stay sharp. Roger that burnt toast. Have a good night, sir. Always appreciate it. And Trek made a large, uh, made a large tactical folder bob ask me how i know how do you know how do you know a you have one and you want to sell it to me and the answer is yes or or do you know ray ennis uh let's see brandon sutton says ray ennis became unwell and i have not seen his products in stock anywhere for a while i don't think his website is up anymore either that's man you know this that first of all, that that sucks, but it, it also sucks when. Um, well, I, what I was saying is, it sucks for the man, and I'm sorry he's not well or passed away or whatever happened with him. Uh, but also, it's interesting to 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 just to note that things are not going to always be there. So if there is, and, and I'm not I'm not trying to compel you to buy stuff, but but if there's something that you really like, like before I was mentioning the Desperado. There were years there where I could have gotten the Desperado and never did. And then it went away. And now if I want to get it, it's like I'm spending a lot of money for it. Um, so if there's something that you like and you can afford it, get it. And then sell something else or sell it if it doesn't live up to, to the expectations. Uh, but these things go away just like just like whole like knife makers and and, and lines of knives just go away. Um, <laughs> there must be a life lesson in that. Beaver Baron says, what the heck? Just when you thought you wasn't going to see a better knife, here comes another. Beaver Baron, that's how we roll here. Uh, wretched excess, as my father would say. Uh, let me show you, let me show you this. I showed you the Night Stalker before. Uh, I've got one in on loan. Oh, I can't wait to see your video. I can't wait to see your video. I had no idea he made a, he made a, Oh, I do. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can see it in my mind's eye. Just like you can conjure up a taste. I think I know what this thing looks like. I think. Kept McNessard says that shining mountain Bowie is so awesome. I had to get one for myself. Quite a knife. Yes, indeed. Blame Dexter. Good to see you here. Blame Dexter. What's popping? I'm late. Uh, well, I was just about to show. Uh, this is the TKL knife that I originally uh, bought. Uh, it's all transitory life. True that, sir. True that. Uh, this is the knife I bought uh, for which he felt compelled to send me this free Night Stalker, which was just so cool. By the way, Night Stalker, for the first time in AEBL Steel, dropping at Blade Show 2023. These have been out of stock for quite a, t quite a time. And... Uh, it's exciting this new blade steel uh for that knife aebl but this is the knife i i bought this is the combatant from tkel knives and i bought it because it is small multi-purpose blade shape but very small to fit in the belt line uh it is well let's see here's the nova one so it's even smaller than the nova one and fits the belt but it also has a um four finger grip just barely but with two finger grooves there it fits the hand perfectly grips back if you will it just oh my gosh it just feels amazing and i kept watching these videos with him talking about this knife and and looking at this knife at, in in uh, different pictures and i love this wood grain uh, g10 and he had already sent me a guardian uh, and i think I thought that was very nice. Um, and I really liked the guardian. And, and so I wanted to, I wanted to actually buy a knife from him and I got this one and then he sends me another free one. So that means I have to buy another one to make up for it. Uh, but in any case, I love this thing. Perfect little utility knife. I mean, I mean, perfect. And uh, without this horizontal clip, I have a, a couple more of these, um, discrete carry concept made clips on the way uh to replace this this is all right but um you could take that off completely and drop this whole package in the pocket again this is just like the night stalker a super thin 
profile sheath this one even thinner than than the night stalker actually about an inch and a half wide sits right over your belt right on your belt line and you can sit you can hunch over you can ride in the car you can you know with the seat belt on you just it just does not it's in that horizontal scout up front the biggest problem is is the belt buckle it's like that's the thing i have to figure out the belt buckle um I'd love to find a belt that doesn't have a buckle in a way. So you could have this exactly in the front without it tilting one way or the other, because uh, there's a belt buckle behind it. I, I think I'm making myself clear. Uh, so this is sort of the second, uh, like the redesign, the second version of this guardian. And he made a couple of changes. He took a little bit of the belly out of this blade and made it a little stabbier at the tip if that's a word, uh, added or accentuated that swedge. I'm not sure which it is. Um, and then added a sharpening choil. Now, I'm not sure if that sharpening choil, I think you can go a little bit higher with that sharpening choil, uh, especially given that plunge grind, you know, you could really actually go up pretty high with that choil if you needed to or wanted to. Um, giving you a little more life so these are ground at 20 20 degrees both both sides this and this and um he put my logos in both of them which is pretty cool uh but just just really like like drastically sharp and i love that i love that it's so like there's so much surety of hand uh making the edges on those knives uh i i, I can't say enough about them Tkel knives. You can check it out yourself. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about a couple of knives uh, in Knife Life news. This first one is very exciting to me because uh, I'm a I'm a fan of Ed Calderon and his um, his stories about working in in uh, anti narcotics policing on the Mexican side, and um, and then hearing uh, about different ways to escape and evade and different stories about how, you know, what happens when you get kidnapped and all this and, and good ways to hide tools on your person. He he's good about, he talks a lot about how uh, EDC tools should be on your person and you might need to migrate them around from bag to, to person to hiding them and, and all that. But the point is it should be on you. Otherwise, if it's in your bag, it may as well be a thousand miles away in a lot of situations. Uh, so anyway, uh, Ed Calderon, a big proponent of the of the Victorinox fruit knife we were talking about before. He's the guy who popularized it, using it in a tactical way. Well, he's got this very cool knife uh, coming out with Tops Knives. I believe it comes out on the morrow. So like in 15 minutes, actually, they're out mountain time. So probably midnight mountain time, this goes live. Anyway, on the 5th of May, uh, and it's really cool. You can see this is uh, more of a traditionally shaped knife. It's not that hawk build fruit knife uh, shape, but you still see that finger notch uh, indexer on the back top of the handle. And that is for your forefinger to go in if you're going to be fighting with this with the tip down edge in. That's how you can always index that knife and know where the edges are. I'm looking at the swedge on this thing, and it looks ready for that secondary edge. To me, that looks like it's um, ready for a grind on top. Uh, I really would like to get this one. Uh, it's a 3.38 inch blade. Uh, that's uh, 1095. Oh, wait, is that 1095 blade steel? I'm sorry, Jim. Can you scroll down? I didn't do my homework on this one because oftentimes they use 154 cm for knives like this. Let's see. Well, 1095. Okay. Well, 1095 with the acid wash finish looks pretty damn sweet. Acid rain finish, I mean. And then you can see in the handle, you see those uh, diagonal elements in the handle scales. Those are actually, um, uh, that's his symbol. It, it's the Santa Muerte. Uh, it's a Mexican symbol uh, icon, I guess, um, of Saint Death. And I know a lot of, uh, uh, well, I don't know. You, you can listen to him talk about it. it. It has cultural significance and it also has significance in his past career 
Um, so very interesting, cool little motif. Um, I'm not a big skull guy, but this skeleton is a, is a pretty cool motif. You'll see it on a lot of his stuff. Uh, Sneak Reaper Industries is another one where you, you'll see that imagery. Uh, so this looks like a really cool one, Micarta uh, Tan. And then you've got the, the swedge there, just begging, begging to be sharpened. Uh, next up, uh, coming from Gerber, this one does look interesting to me. Uh, I've had a, Gerber sent a couple of things to me not that long ago, and they've done some cool stuff. The Sedula is a great knife, if not a little bit boring, but a very good knife with a crossbar lock and um, very much uh, in the vein of the Griptilian. Um, and they've had some other pretty good ones come out. This one looks pretty sweet, I got to say. Uh, you know, looks are one thing, though. Um, but you've got a nice, uh, it's going from left to right, nice deep carry pocket clip. And they actually, uh, they chamfer the screws in such a way that uh, they they don't present any issue, uh, even though they're not inset and flat. Uh, so great, great thing there. It looks like a micarta handle. I like the uh, design etched into it. And then you've got the crossbar lock there and a very nice blade shape. I got to say that blade shape. Uh, I'm. You know, it's a generic drop point, but for some reason, that one looks pretty good. Excuse me. Uh, so I guess this is a budget a budget one. Um, but I guess all Gerbers are pretty much budget ones. Sedula is not. Sedulo, I should say. Sedula. Um, sorry. Uh, they're calling that the pivot lock. I think that's a, a misleading name. I think... I think the pivot lock is kind of like the thing that CRKT does with the deadbolt lock. That's right on the pivot. This is northeast or northwest of the pivot in this picture. Um, it's a crossbar lock. So come up with something um, crossbar lock-ish uh, in terms of names. Now, that's that's just me Monday morning quarterbacking over the naming of Gerber's new lock. I'm, I'm sure it's not that big a deal. So... Those are on the way. Any any thoughts? Anybody out there going to get that tops knife? I think I might have to. Dissentient 101. Good to see you here, Dissentient. How do you not have a Bravo 3 or Bravo Crusader, even a Bravo Taupe Recon? I had a... Yeah, that's a good question. I was just about to try and explain myself to you, Dissentient, but I realized there is no explaining and there is no excuse. I got to get one of those in my life. I had a regular Bravo years ago, uh, really great knife, never used it, and always wished I got the 2.5, I think it was called, with a better, uh, with a longer blade. I always thought the handle to blade ratio of the Bravo was a little off, or that the handle was just a little too long. So I got rid of it and never replaced it. But you raise a good point. Brandon Sutton says, Bob, you ever heard of utility tools? They went out of business in 2020. 2021 but i tried contacting him to see how he was but no luck they made great outdoor blades the website is still up though utility tools no i don't think i have um but i will check it out that sounds like an incredibly generic name utility tool company it's like the the american the american theater company of the united states of america there was a place in New York called that. Of course it was ironic, but I thought it was funny. Joe Swanson. Good to see you here, Joe. Would not, uh, what knife would you use for self-defense? Hello from Canada. Oh boy. Well, I gotta, um, I gotta say, I have a lot of, uh, really nice fancy knives that could be, that are all, uh, that would all be great for self-defense, but something simple and something fixed. I mean, this, this is uh this is a great, like if you really truly think that you need it for self-defense and it's not like me who carries a lot of knives that he likes a lot, uh, but could use them in a self-defense situation if pressed, uh, then yeah, get then. But I'm talking about if you need a knife because you really need something to protect yourself in a close situation uh, and you can't carry something large, I'd say get one of these fruit knives or a pioneer woman uh, pairing knife. Those have been, um, well, speaking of Ed Calderon again, 
uh, in in his organic medium testing, they do these classes where they where they actually um, they press a lot of tactical knife. Uh, they do pressure testing for tactical knife concepts and stuff like that. And they also do um, uh, tra trauma medical training at the same time, which is a pretty cool combination. Um, and in testing all of these amazing knives that are like all these expensive, cool design for tactical fighting, this and that, the knives that have proven the best are these pioneer woman pairing knives, pioneer woman, you know who she is. And she's got a line of knives and they just happen to be dope. So uh, sorry for saying dope. I, I feel like I'm not young enough, but uh, so really for something for self-defense, something like that, and then make yourself a sheath. And it doesn't have to be out of Kydex. You can actually make a sheath with a lighter and a ch cheap, uh plastic water bottle especially of the lighter plastic the kind that you can just whoosh, accordion well you can put that around the knife blade and heat it up with a lighter and it'll start to shrink around that and um and then that's something that if you ever heaven forbid needed uh you could throw it down a sewer grate and you would never miss it like you would one of these expensive knives i'm just kidding that's of course a dr drama and a joke but you know for self-defense, you you might actually not want a nice knife or one that you're, you know, one that's built for it because, I don't know, you just might not. Uh, one Minute Knife Review says, and we here in the States mostly believe that everyone should be able to defend themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. should. It's a God-given right. Not in my current government. I know. I know. I heard what your current government a couple, not too long ago, uh, said that, like, that you cannot use guns for self-defense. Like even if you have them for hunting, you cannot use them to protect your life, which to me is just, that's nuts. Even if you already have it and it's for like hunting animals to eat or, or for sport or whatever, you still can't use that. You know, Oh, sorry. You know what? Go ahead. Take it. There, there's all my stuff, uh, including my family. No, that's not going to happen. Kevin Moore said, uh, carried my Spyderco Danger Pickle today. Love that knife. That is a cool one. That is a cool knife. Uh, Danger Pickle. I think that was, um, who who coined that? That Was that uh, Bearded Gear? Edgy American says, I was wondering if you were going to tell the Pioneer Woman story. Oh, yeah. I need, to, I need to get one of these Pioneer Woman knives. And actually, I've seen a couple of people on line who was it where was it who was selling those with with cool little sheaths that they were making for it so like it professor edc says not young enough you just made me 20 years older <laughs> that's funny uh nonsense sir you and i are the same age i believe professor edc i think we came to that determination uh and a fine age it is indeed uh wouldn't change it for a thing I like what Jim just put up. Become a Gentleman Junkie on Patreon to be eligible for this month's Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway, which I was supposed to show off several hours ago now. The Kaiser Roach. Thanks to Dave, this old sword blade reviews. He's like my connection uh, for giveaway knives. He sent this one in that recent box, and it is beautiful and totally mint, uh, except for my pawing it. Um, this is... Uh, the re re-release of the Kaiser Roach. I have one from the very first run uh, years ago when it was new, when the Kaiser Vanguard line was new, and uh, the Roach it was contoured uh, G10, and uh, I think it was 154 cm at the time. Now it's N690 CO and micarta, and just totally butter butter smooth drop shut action so this is going to be the gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife uh in the month of may and uh yeah i think i think whoever gets this is going to be psyched this was one of those knives where i was like oh my gosh um and then luckily uh uh, uh hilltop edc bj hill sent me one of these a long time ago one of the original ones uh, so I can't justify adopting this. So I have to send it along. Uh, and I I have a one knife adoption policy <laughs> from these amazing boxes that Dave sends. And it's not this one. This one. 
goes to one lucky gentleman junkie. So that is it right there. And uh, I think that's it right here, too. Um, I want to thank you guys for showing up. Kept McNessart, those Pioneer Woman pairing knives are less than $9. $9 affordable self-defense. Yes. Uh, if you guys, anyone who's still definitely would not want to be on the on the end of that. No. Um, yep. It was Jake who coined that term. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, improvised weapons. Since we're talking about it, this is one of my favorites right here. It's a big nut that I got. It's the biggest nut I could find at Home Depot on some paracord. This is about 11 inches of paracord. I've experimented with lengths, and about this length is about the best. Greg Maroney, have a great night, sir, and have a great weekend sir, uh, also. Mind blown, says B for Baron. Uh, and this thing, man, yeah, you can use this like a flail, and at a certain length like this, it's not going to ricochet back and hit you in the head. Edgy American, good night, Shane. Great. I can't wait to check out the, your, your text. Uh, James Moore, it's not too late to hit that like button. That's right. You can hit that like button on your way out. Thank you one and all for joining us on the Knife Junkie uh, on Thursday Night Knives. It's been a pleasure. I love Thursday night. This is one of the best, uh, uh, well, it's one of the best parts of the week for sure. Uh, check out Sunday, Sam Curtis of Polite But Dangerous Tools. He is actually the brother of someone we had on the show recently making some really beautiful, unique fixed blade knives up there in Alaska. So do check that out. All right. I think I'm talked out. Chris, thank you. This uh, Thanks for this great show, Bob and Jim. Night, everybody. He says, good night to you, Blade Ogre. Acid Test Kids, you have an awesome night, too. Great weekend. Take it easy, everyone. Uh, good night, y'all, says One Minute Knife Reviews. Good night to you, sir. Five Doors, thank, uh, Five Doors says, thanks, Bob. Thank you, sir. Uh, and Jim, <laughs> yes, of course. And Joe Swanson, bye, y'all. Bye, Joe. Take care, man. Have a great weekend. Uh, and everyone, have a great weekend. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>